Welcome to ITVideoCoach.com. This is Bill Grismore, and this is going to be part one for preparing for the Exchange 2007 install. So the goal of this video series is to walk you through the basic steps you have to go through of how to prepare your environment for an Exchange Server 2007 installation. So we're not going to install Exchange in this video presentation. We're going to look at all the things we need to do to prepare our environment for installing Exchange to make sure that when we go to actually install Exchange that everything goes nice and smooth. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So to dive right in here, let's just take a look at our tool snap-in. I have a tools.msc snap-in that I already created earlier. And Active Directory is already installed on this box, so we already have a domain in place. So to install Exchange Server 2007, you must have a domain environment. You cannot work in a work group. You cannot have a standalone Exchange server by itself without a domain in place. So that's going to be a basic requirement. If you have a smaller customer and they want an email solution, uh, you're not going to be able to use Exchange if they don't have a domain environment. So that's your first thing. So you must verify that they have Active Directory in place. So you can see that we have itvideocoach.local is our domain. And there's not a whole lot here. This is just a uh, sample domain. Uh, the most important thing you want to verify when you first come in and install Exchange is you need to verify where your FISMO roles are. So your FISMOs are your flexible single masters of operation and you just right click on the domain and go to operations masters and you can click there and it's going to come up and show you have a RID master, relative ID master, a PDC emulator and an infrastructure master and if we look closely here we can see they're currently on DC1 and then we have an option to transfer them to a different box okay so if you come in as a consultant to a company there may be a situation where the FISMOs may have been moved around now there are five FISMOs total these are three of the FISMOs the RID, the PDC emulator and the infrastructure master uh, they're all located on DC1 of course in this example or in this demo uh, I've only got one uh, domain controller so all the FISMOs are on that one domain controller the idea is just to kind of show you you know where they're all located at uh, and how to verify where they're located at probably be the most important thing now the next one we can look at would be Active Directory Domains and Trusts we go to Operations Master and we can see that DC1 again is holding the Domain Naming Master I'm not real concerned uh, in this video presentation about exactly what each FISMO does. It's more just about showing you, you know, how to find out where they're located at so you can identify where they are. I have other videos I've created that get into Active Directory more and will describe to you in detail, you know, what each FISMO is. If you want to find out more about that, just go to itvideocoach.com and look under the Active Directory section for FISMO roles and you'll see a complete video presentation there on your FISMOs. Alright, so let's take a look at one more. Now if I look at my Snap-in and I click Add, uh, the last FISMO that I'm looking for is the Active Directory Schema uh, Master and I can find him and verify where he's located at by going into the Active Directory Schema Snap-in. So the name of the snap-in that I'm looking for is the Active Directory Schema Snap-in, and I don't see that here. So that means I have not yet registered the DLL. So I'm going to go to Start Run. We'll do a Reg SVR32, and it's schmmgmt.dll. Okay. And what this is going to do is going to register the DLL. All right, so once the uh, DLL is registered, now we can go back here and we can add that snap-in. And we can see we now have the Active Directory Schema snap-in. So don't try to look for it under S's somewhere because it's, it's not just the Schema snap-in, it's the Active Directory Schema snap-in. Okay? And I can verify my Schema Master. 
So again, uh, if I had multiple domain controllers in an environment, a very large environment, maybe with domain controllers spread across the country or across the globe, like in a U.S. military install or a large corporation, I'd want to identify where they're located at. You know, what domain controller holds what FISMO role? So this again tells me that the schema master is on DC1. Okay, one little note about FISMOs though for this presentation is there's only going to be one schema master for the entire forest, right? And there's only one domain naming master for the entire forest. So these two roles, the domain naming master and the schema master, there's only one of those for the entire forest. One schema master and one domain naming master for the entire forest. And what's important about that is that matches your exchange org. Now, of all these FISMO roles, the most important one is the Schema Master. When we go to install Exchange, we have to have Windows Server 2003 Service Pack 1 or higher installed on the DC that is going to be the Schema Master for my forest for my Exchange install. When we go to install Exchange, we're going to have to extend the Schema. When we go to extend the Schema, that Schema Master must be on a domain controller that is Windows Server 2003 Service Pack 1 or higher. All the other domain controllers, we don't care about the Service Pack. I would prefer that all my domain controllers are Windows 2003 domain controllers with Service Pack, well, with the latest Service Pack installed or higher. Okay, whatever the latest Service Pack is. So Service Pack 1 or higher, or whatever the latest Service Pack is, make sure you have that installed. You could get away with having a 2003 uh, domain controller with Service Pack 1 or higher uh, that has your Schema Master role and your other domain controllers could be 2000 domain controllers, that's possible, uh, but that would be it. Again, we recommend everything 2003, all your domain controllers 2003, latest Service Pack or higher, if possible, but it's not a requirement. You don't have to have every single domain controller as 2003 domain controllers. Okay. The other thing that's important is to make sure your Active Directory is healthy. If you have a large organization and you've been adding computers and users to your system over time, uh, you may run into situations where your Active Directory database actually becomes corrupted. I mean, it's possible through use and deleting user accounts and adding user accounts, things can happen where the database can become fragmented over time. You might want to even consider uh, calling Microsoft and spending the $259, I know you don't want to do that, but if you have a large environment and you think that your database may be degrading over time or there might be some problems with the database, before I, I extend my schema, I'd want to make sure that my database is clean. So go ahead and give them a call, spend the money, it might be well worth it. Other things that you can do, uh, obviously, would be to check your logs. We can always check our logs and look for any errors in our logs. So we can go to My Computer, go to Manage, and we can simply look at Event Viewer, and we can look for any logs uh, that might cause problems. For example, for Active Directory, we can look in our directory service log. You can see there's not a whole lot here, but we can see that there is some, some information here we can look at. It's a brand new clean install, so you don't see a lot of errors there. Okay, uh, Over time, we may see a lot of errors. And what we'll be looking at next is DNS. Make sure there's no errors with your DNS. DNS is very important. And just kind of spot check all your logs. Most importantly, the directory service log and make sure it's clean uh, and that everything's there that you need. Okay? Um, you can also defrag your database. Uh, I don't have time to show you in this video how to defrag, but I have another video you can go look at on the website, itvideocoach.com, that shows you how to take a domain controller and boot it up into a mode where you can actually defrag the AD database. So these are things you can do to make sure things are going to run smooth for you. The last thing I want to show you in this presentation is You've got to make sure that you have a GC in every site. That would be a global catalog server. Uh, and even without Exchange being mentioned, you should have a GC in every site. So you go to Active Directory Sites and Services, go to Sites, uh, go to whatever your site is, go to all your sites. In this example, default first site name site, and choose the property of the server, not the property of the site, but the property of the server, NTDS settings, and verify that the GC checkbox is checked. We want to make sure 
that we have at least one GC in every site, and that's where you go to do that. It is enabled by default. You never know. Somebody could have accidentally cleared it uh, or done something with it. So just make sure that you have at least one GC in every site. Okay? Uh, stay tuned for part two coming up next.